I had some glasses here. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is called Pity and Compassion. We have a family friend who I will call Melky because I do not want you to know his real name. He is a sweet young man. No matter what happens to him, he keeps a smile. Some people are like that. Melky lives in a house for young people who were kicked out of their family homes. His mother and stepfather live in a big home. A dozen people could live in that house. The house where Melky sleeps is not a home. Worse still, it is not in a safe part of town. He has been robbed. He has been beaten. Melky likes to smoke weed. I do not believe that I have ever been in his presence when he did not smell like weed. He smells like a sociologist. <laughs> is Dave still here? Oh, he is here. I told him that he can smoke weed and function, but he won't be crisp. He thinks that is funny. I did not tell him that I stole that line from Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Melky's stepfather, that's the part where you laugh? <laughs> it's the previous line where you were supposed to laugh. Melky's stepfather is a banker. His mother is also a professional. I do not know her job. The family has money, three vacations a year money, but they will not spend it on him. They say it is because of the weed. Maybe that is the reason, but I believe something worse is going on. Melky is multiracial. His biological father is a black man and the stepfather is a white man. I could be wrong. I hope I am wrong. But whether I am right or wrong, Melky is living in a dangerous environment. I do not feel sorry for him. Please do not get it twisted. I am not a recent convert to Ayn Rand's objectivism or some other selfishness masquerading as deep thought. As a child, I was taught that it is wrong to feel sorry for others. Pity is not compassion. Pity grows out of arrogance. It is a way of saying that I am better than you are. I cringe each time I hear someone say, there but for the grace of God go I. My circumstances are better than Melky's, but I am not better than he is. We are both souls struggling in the mist. Instead of feeling pity for someone, it would be better if we hurt for them, and better still if we hurt with them. There is not only arrogance in pity, there is passivity. When we hurt with someone, we are more likely to help them. Dr. King famously said, Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? I do not know it is, if it is the most persistent and urgent question, but it is an important life-directing question. Pity is not something we do for others. It is something we do to them. Jacqueline Arlinda Ellis was my friend. She died on September 21st, 2016, after a lengthy battle with cancer. We were friends as children, and we attended Jarvis Christian College together. She was smart. She became a lawyer, moved to Washington, D.C., and spent her life working in the United States Congress. Her family was working class. But when I was a child, they seemed rich to me. I know it sounds silly, but I believe that they were wealthy because they lived in a mostly brick home. I bring up Jackie for two reasons. First, because I miss her. The, <laughs> the world is bigger and colder since she died. Her goal was to be third, God, friends, and family, then herself. I also mentioned her because of what her mother did for me. I used to eat at their home a lot. One day her mother, I know her only as Mrs. Ellis, said to me, David, I don't want to embarrass you, 
but you must let me know if you need money to go to college. I was embarrassed. I had been admitted to Jarvis, but I did not have the money for the bus ride to Hawkins, Texas. It is likely that Jackie told her mother about my problem. She was like that. I don't remember what I said, but I do remember that Ms. Ellis gave me $75. That is $316 in today's money. Mrs. Ellis said that I could pay her back by helping others. She has long since gone to her reward, but I hope that she knew how much her kindness impacted my journey. People who are hurting do not always say thank you. Maybe they were not raised with good manners. Maybe they are embarrassed. Maybe the hurt is so blinding, so suffocating, that they do not think to say thank you. When we hurt with others, and that shared hurt propels us to help them, we should not do it to hear them express their gratitude. Nevertheless, we are sometimes put out when the people we help do not say thank you. So, my fairest friends, today I ask you to accept me as a proxy for all the people you have helped and accept my thanks on their behalf. To those of you who cried for another's, another person's child, thank you. Gave money to someone who did not repay it, thank you. Befriended someone who was marginalized by others, thank you. Visited someone who was ill or in prison, thank you. Spent time with someone who was lonely, thank you. Built homes for the homeless, thank you. Gave clothes to the first lady's attic, thank you. Took students to eat at the Rock or the Quad or any other restaurant, thank you. Invited others into your homes for a meal, thank you. Made beds in your homes for others to sleep for a night, a week, or for months, thank you. To you who have seen occasions to help as opportunities and not burdens, thank you. Thank you for what you have done, and thank you for the kindness that you will continue to show. Thank you.